You gonna lead us in? Sure. Um, we have two days left uh, to order meals for a gathering or for our uh, church gathering in Hewitt Park. If you are in pers person this morning and would like to um, get a meal, please write your name on um, the back of the hymn insert and put it in the offering plates and we'll collect it. Um, and if not, if not, if you haven't signed up and you'd like to and you're having trouble, please give us a call at the church and we'd be happy to help you. Leslie? Thanks, Catherine. Um, there's a Zoom poll running right now, and that Zoom poll is meant to help your session understand who has been vaccinated um, and how we're feeling about vaccinations. So if you're willing to pick, take the time to answer those three questions, the session and I will very much appreciate it. We also want to encourage folks who are in the pews, if you could tell us a little something about vaccinating, we've got a really formal way for you to do that. If you would just turn over a hymn page and write out whether or not you've been vaccinated, if you plan on it, just send us a little message about that. You can place it in the offering plate that is on the bell tables or in the narthex as you leave for your convenience. So um, thanks for that. And uh, youth, this Wednesday, we're meeting in the Serenity Garden from six to seven for our cha and chats. And the following week, we'll be meeting um, on a Wednesday night, uh, but in Woodway Park for hammocking. And put on your calendars uh, Saturday, May 29th. It is the Saturday of Memorial Day. We are going to William and Kitty Huneke's house um, to their backyard for s'mores and a fire, bonfire. Leslie? Perfect. We're also waiting to hear back from our landscaping company about replacement shrubs and plants for what was lost in the winter storm. If you're interested in helping us to offset some of the cost of what it would be to reinstall them, we're going to plan a landscaping day when we know more. So if you're interested, just let me know. Um, it felt really good to remove some things that had perished and it'll feel much better to plant some things that have promise. We are getting ready for um, a midweek reading group in the month of June. The midweek with need group will be gathering on Thursdays to discuss the spirituality of Margaret Mead, written by uh, one of our elders, Alicia Kaufman. So if you're interested in that reading group, if you could put it in the chat and let us know, we'd uh, look forward to getting you more information. Catherine? And uh, we are so grateful for the way that the congregation is practicing registering for events, aren't we, Leslie? Very. Um, these registration forms uh, are new and different for us. They don't always feel very hospitable to decide in advance if you're coming to church. But we know that you've found the forms on the website. You've also found them on Realm. Um, you've called the church office when you've needed help. And we just appreciate the acquisition of a new discipline during this transitional time. It's definitely not the easiest um, and we are very grateful. So thank you. This 1030 service enjoys a baptism, uh, one of the two sacraments of our Presbyterian church. And we wanna welcome the family of Sebastian, Sebastian and Anna Langdell as we prepare to baptize Athena Rose Leotin Langdell and that is my effort to pronounce that historic name so that they can correct me when I get to the sanctuary if I did it wrong. I don't wanna do it wrong in the sacrament. Um, but welcome to the godparents who are gathered and please note uh, the welcome that we have in our bulletin to the family. That bulletin's also available online. Our prayer concerns include several. Carrie Knight underwent surgery this last week on the 19th and is currently recovering. Dana Williams continues to recover from double carpal tunnel uh, surgery. Paul Kluge uh, returns to a chemo regimen for his liver cancer. And a family friend of Lucinda Peoples, baby Justin Joslin is in need of your prayers, yet unborn and suffering with a heart condition. Speaking of babies, Laura Munn and Sandra Dubowski welcomed a new grandchild into the world. Austin Cody Spiegel was born on April 22nd and everyone is doing well. Jonas Iogu appreciates prayers for his family as they struggle against powers and principalities. 
These are the prayers that we lift up just a few amid a whole slew of prayers that are in our prayer connection document that's posted each week. Randy's in the sanctuary around that font that's going to be working hard today. Uh, as he gets ready to pour the water, we have a tradition in this church to welcome one another with a single phrase, and that phrase is welcome home, children of God. And so we're going to offer that together, wherever you are, with one voice, welcome home, children of God. And Becky uh, is on our harp. We're going to, Jeremy's going to pull her into view with the um, camera, and she will bring us our prelude. Becky. Um, Please rise as you are able for our call to worship. Jesus asks, do you love me? The question has staying power. It lingers like the dawn in each day of our lives. Jesus asks, do you love me more than these? Such a persistent question must be dealt with gently but continually. Even as we are Christ's imperfect church, we gather to worship that we may be remade and renewed. May our renewal from God's energy and strength work through us in right ways in the spaces between each Sunday morning moment. Amen. the vision dream. 
dream the dream in bold accord. Come celebrate the journey now and praise the Lord. Let courage be our friend, let wisdom be our guide. As we in mission magnify the crucified in bold accord, come celebrate the journey now and praise the Lord. Come sing, O church, in joy. Come join, O church, in song, for Christ the Lord has triumphed for the ages long in bold accord. Come celebrate the journey now and pray. You may be seated. We do appreciate your forbearance with the masks that are required. By the action of your session on April 19, there was the decision that vaccinated people from the pulpit could remove masks for the purpose of speaking um, or praying. And so we turn to the prayer of confession. It is our opportunity each week to come again to ourselves, to God, to our neighbor, and seek to live a loving and responsive life. There's a prayer that we share, followed by the particular prayers that are for our own heart and mind. So with one voice, whether we are on the platform of Zoom or whether we are in the room, let us pray together. God of all reformations, we are mindful of our resistance to change. We have made declarations about what is good and what is bad. With discerning hearts, we have arrived to patterns and preferences. Even in our good intentions, our own community of faith needs your spirit to reform our rigidity. How we long to be adaptive and pliable, even as we build a strong foundation on Christ's cornerstone. Discerning and courageous when dismantling is required, we long to live into resurrection truths for the sake of all that is temporal and transcendent. Hear our prayer as we offer up our confessions and our aspirations. In the presence of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Friends, the grace we receive, this gift from God, is not to be conserved, but that it may flow between us and always. So we take a minute each week to ritualize extending the peace of Christ to one another, that we can be queued up all week long to extend it in right ways. Take a minute. The peace of Christ be with each one of you. Peace of Christ, 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 Christ be with you. Peace of Christ with everyone. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ from the right. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Okay. Oops. Wow. 
Hey. Hi. How the, how's the Delk family? Well, here, Josh, come like, here. Delivering the spirit box. Um, <laughs> just for the visitors in our room today, um, Sarah Delk, how would you explain the spirit box? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I thought I'd stump you right off because you're such yeah. a bright young lady. Yeah. You're just throwing me in there. Um, I am. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> It's um, a time when the children can come together and put a few things in that they like into a box and then Leslie gets to decide what to do with it. I think, I think that I want to say fab definition. Great. Let's go. Kind of big deal. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So do you want us to just get started or? Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Um, so. I have a pack of Welch's gummies. This is my breakfast this morning. Mm. Yeah. Gotta love it. Let Rachel show hers. Yeah. Rachel, we got, rat. we got a rat. Okay. Josh, what do you have? Rat? I'm feeling your mom in that one, Rachel. Josh, tell Josh, Josh, go ahead and put that front and center. That's an empty Coke bottle and that's a glass Coke bottle. That is from days gone by. And do you have well, do you even know the logo that Coke had for a long time? Have a Coke and a, I think the congregation could say it for me, oh, have no. a Coke and a smile. <laughs> Did you say have a Coke and a Sprite? No, she said have a Coke and a smoke. It's right. No, 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 no. It's right. Okay, okay, Delta. We're not on mute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, rhyming, rhyming is very good for the brain. I'll debrief that whole thing with your mom later. But what I want to say is that when I was your age, do you know that my mother would drive me every morning to Quick Trip, which was a gas service station, and she would let me buy a Coke and a package of Snowballs or Twinkies. And I would eat Coke and Twinkies or Snowballs on the way to church. And then I think sometimes my mom wondered why I was talking so much in church. Do you know why I was talking so much in church? Sure. No, sugar. Sugar. That's what sugar. I just said. Sugar. I yeah. said sugar. I said sugar. Oh, oops. Rachel, let me ask you, what does a rat have to do with our church? Well, there's a lot of rats in the ceiling, especially above my mom's office. So we live in this urban environment, right? And creatures like rats, like squirrels, like difficult things that like to find shelter, make their way into our building. But do you know who comes to help us out? There's this company and all they do is manage this sort of thing. And they help us set up um, all kinds of perimeters around our building to help keep critters out and to encourage people to be in. But during the pandemic, the critters have been playing. So would you please hold the rat up? And let me offer a small, uh, very serious religious blessing to rid us of the rats. Rats, rats, go away. <laughs> the people, no, no, this is quite serious. The people, rats, rats, go away. The people are coming back to play. And now we have so many visitors in our sanctuary that are like, wow, they're talking about their rats. But you know, First Prez is pretty out there and honest. So I wanna thank you guys for putting it on the table. Um, enjoy the sugar for breakfast, eat some protein for lunch. Let's say our prayer. God be in my heart. God be in my left. God be in my right. <laughs> God be beneath me, God be above me, God be in the faces of all who love me. Thanks, you guys.
So now is it more, are you more able to hear me now? So I'll be uh, putting my mask on for the baptism, but leaving it off for now. So um, Sebastian and Anna, with all the technical stuff, on this, the 25th day of April, in the year of our Lord, 2021, is it your desire that your daughter Athena should receive the sacrament of baptism? If so, please say, it is. And do you, the congregation of First Presbyterian, promise to do your part as you are able to guide and love on Athena as she engages this new journey with Christ? If so, whether you are in the room or on Zoom, please say, we do. We do. We do. And do God we do. Of Athena, we do. Promise to guide and love her as she discovers her Christian distinctiveness in a company of other world religions? If so, please say, we do. We do. Rachel, can you give us a thumbs up? (laughs) There you go. So sharing some of the baptismal water today, we recognize the unique uh, role that Anna and Sebastian have in the lives of their children. So we take this baptismal water to your eyes that you might never lose sight that you are the parental trustees of your children who are God's particular joy for you and for all who know them. We take the baptismal water to your mouth that you might always speak the words of life and faith to your children. We take the water to your hands that you might be strong, but not too strong as you guide and protect them. And we sprinkle the baptismal water upon your feet that you might always rejoice in God's providence for your family. Would you hold the water for me? Athena Rose, honey, come here. Come see me. Oh my goodness. What? I know. What a doll. I know. Well, it's like that. It's like that. It's like that. It's like that. (laughs) Athena Rose, I baptize you in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I know it. Well, let's see if you... I Well, I think that sounds like a reasonable complaint. I think it sounds like a reasonable complaint. This is a whole lot of work. Look at all these people looking at you. I know, it, it is celebrity status burden. Um, look, here's brother, come on. You wanna come with us, Oliver? We'll just take a short walk. You, you are not the only one complaining about these days, honey. It's hard, hard work. Join me in singing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus me Randy, can you, can you lead us in Jesus Loves Me? Sorry. Okay. You want to come, Oliver? We'll get up here and sing. Oh, do you like it? We'll sing Jesus Loves Me in just a moment. I skipped the Jesus Loves Me. So let's sing it in a moment. May that which we do this day cross out all unnecessary pain and suffering in Athena's life. May she always be in the arms of the church and know the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're a smart girl. Good girl. Do you want to present? You did such a good job. Join in, join in contemplating the words of Jesus loves me. Well done, honey. Oh yes, no. Jesus you did such a good job. Loves me. Yeah, this side's better. Yeah, 
I think your voice should always be heard. Here's your mommy. Thanks for letting me hold her for so long. We have a gift. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Well done, honey. Oliver, way to hang in there. <laughs> We're going to be reading briefly this morning from the prophet Isaiah. We'll read from the 57th chapter, verses 14 to 21. Join me in a brief word of prayer. God of word and deed, God of understanding and of wonder, we pause offering you a restful heart and mind for a moment to take in the strength of your timeless word, its particularity for our lives, and to muster our courage to live it in right ways. So strengthen us to this end as we beseech your spirit and settle in for the hearing, the speaking, the living to your glory. Amen beginning at the 14th chapter, it shall be said, build up, build up, prepare the way, remove every obstruction from my people's way. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with those who are contrite and humble in spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite. For I will not continually accuse, nor will I always be angry, for then the spirits would go, grow faint before me, even the souls that I have made. Because of their wicked and covetous ways, I was angry. Covetedness, I was angry. I struck them. I, I hid. I was angry but they kept turning back to their own ways. I have seen their ways, but I will heal them, I will lead them and repay them with comfort, creating for their mourners the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to the far and the near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. But the wicked are like the tossing sea that cannot keep still in the covetedness its waters toss up mire and mud. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rise, O church, like Christ and gold. 
Now let us rise as we are able for this morning's gospel reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven of them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Thanks. You may be seated. There once was a man committed to Sunday mornings, and when he got ready in his Sunday mornings, he would put on some of his finest clothes. He put on his finest clothes because all day long, all week long, he wore whatever he want, wanted, and on Sunday mornings, he sought to dress to the nines, which for him included what he called his Sunday socks. The Sunday socks were of various uh, prints and colors. Some Sunday socks had wine bottles and grapes on them. Other socks were vertically striped, sometimes with colors that clearly went together and sometimes with colors that clearly were in competition. Sometimes the sock was of the cosmos, sometimes the sock held the scientific formula E equals MC squared. Those who attended Sunday mornings with the man declared that he never wore the same socks twice, but he had a profound investment in dressing these foundational appendages. <laughs> and when he was in Sunday school, he would sit with his knees wide and he would pull his pant legs up so that Sunday socks were clearly visible. They were, in fact, often the subject of conversation as people settled into their Sunday school hour. Not only did he have fashion sense, this man, he also had religious and biblical sense. He was somewhat of their authority in the classroom. And so when there were questions that truly quandried the class, they would turn to the man with the Sunday socks and say, what do you think of such things as loving your enemy? What do you think of such things as the resurrection of the body? It was on a particular post-Easter Sunday in his class when they posed the latter question. 
The class, in fact, had been at somewhat of a disagreement with itself, which is always the best form of a class. On the one hand, people said, the notion of resurrection is clearly outdated given the scientific awareness that we now live in. One must manage the resurrection as a myth. And other members of the class, taking up quite the contrary argument, said, the resurrection is not meant to be put through the sieve of science. Resurrection is to be taken on spirit. Resurrection is to be taken on faith. And it was at that moment when the two voices of the class had been declared that the man removed his Sunday shoes and then he stripped off his Sunday socks so that they were inside out and one could see the many threads within the sock that made up the fancy patterns so celebrated. Planting both his feet on the ground, the gentleman turned to his class and said, it is important for us to get real on something that matters so much as resurrection. Folks, when the 20th chapter of John presents the disciples locked away in a room. It is not just a historical comment on a space, but it is, in fact, a description of their spiritual condition, which is being locked down or in. This morning, I want to offer you the metaphor of the fine Sunday dress. Dressing. The way we garb ourselves, the way we put makeup on our face, the way we put perfume upon our skin is a form of communicating our hopes about ourselves to other people. But we must also confess that some of the ways we garb ourselves in clothes or in ideology or in um, convictions runs the risk of locking us down and in. There is something about the resurrection narratives that mean to say to you and I again, open, 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 open open tomb, open womb, sorry, open tomb, open wound, open room. The prophet Isaiah speaks to the people on the matter of building up, building up and around, and cautions the building up with the temptation of covetness, which is the temptation to eagerly own and impose something. So the gentleman with the Sunday socks in the dilemma with the Christian education classroom peels the socks off of his feet, plants them to the ground, and says, it's important to get real on something that matters as much as resurrection. And I want to submit to you that in that move, he participates in the resurrection wisdom that is God's. There are those that say, that when our skin is planted to the earth, there is a unique electrical connection between us and the earth. How many of you have ever been barefoot people in the spring? Anybody barefoot people? It's not the easiest. But one of the things that barefoot in the spring people say is that it just feels good. 
to have your shoes off. Some say that there is an electrical current at work in the planet that is about 7.83 hertz on an average. And that a similar frequency exists on an average within the human brain. That is, there is this congruence as creatures and a groundedness with the earth. And that when we are grounded, and not all of us ground in the same way, it doesn't have to be through bare feet, but when we are grounded and our frequency is similar to the frequency of the earth, we receive a peacefulness and a calm that offsets some of the frequencies around us in cars and cell phones, etc., that can increase our frequency to an anxious register. The gentleman in the Sunday school class continues. Resurrection, he says to his class, is not fundamentally church language. It's fundamentally the language of the Creator God. And therein he begins to roll out one of his most profound beliefs of all. He continues. He says to the class, Resurrection is being grounded fully in the moment in which we find ourselves and feeling the compulsion to move forward from that particular circumstance in particular ways. Resurrection, not some end time wait for, but resurrection, some present and not yet realized moment. What we do in this Sunday School class, the way we ground our conversations in resurrection, must comport with the experiences that we have in life. My Father, in the Gospel of John, has sent me, and so I send you. I send you through grounded feet. <laughs> through a grounded mind, through a grounded sense of self that is not locked down, but temporarily undressed, appropriately undressed, to feel the frequency of the life around us, those who suffer, those who wonder, those who wander, and what is our opportunity to serve them? The Church of Jesus Christ has a real dilemma because over the centuries we have been beautifully dressed. With buildings, with wealth, and up until quite recently with a lot of social capital. The dilemma for us against magical thinking, as Dr. Tran and Dr. Stahl have presented us to us, is whether or not we will have magical thinking that wishes for something to be true, or resurrection thinking that moves our embodiment forward in order to help God realize something. Love, justice, mercy, kindness, humility. This language in the prophet of Isaiah that flirts with the concept that a, of a God that punishes but cannot sustain the punishing for the love of the people turns to the church and says, with all the beautiful dressing around you, how will you ground yourself in the world today? How will you ground yourself in issues of equity and difference how will you ground yourself in order not to conquer the world, not to colonize the world, but to serve it? 
The beauty of John's gospel is that there is no sin in being locked down temporarily. And I submit to you, it's all right for us to be in the dressing. (laughs) But it is not the point. The point is the perimeter and the outside of this place. The streets and the sidewalks that Jesus walks in the narrative gospels and invites us to walk in our own day, in our own time. This is what we pray for Athena, that she will bring the voice she brought today that she continues to bring, that she will bring her voice to the church and she will carry the good news out in right ways beyond the dressed walls. Getting real, staying grounded, hitting a frequency with our Creator so that what we do really glorifies His intent to continue creating. That gentleman kept his socks off and then he walked into the sanctuary with bare feet and they said, his feet are ugly. They look like tree roots. May we be so grounded and so open and so anchored. Amen. We're going to take a minute and affirm our faith using the affirmation printed in our bulletin or on our screen. With one voice, I invite you to rise up and share in the affirmation together. We affirm Easter joy. What perishes pushes forward in new ways. We affirm Easter joy. Jesus' message is carried forward by Christ. We affirm Easter joy. It lives intimately with our pain and sorrow. We affirm the Easter joy of a living God who arrives to us with iterations of energy. We affirm the Easter joy of disciples who pushed through consternation and uncertainty. We affirm that they collected Christ clues and served those around them and boldly. We affirm the church that seeks to share a mature Easter joy that the old, old story may know no end. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Please stay standing as our deacon, Meredith Palm, leads us in a prayer of the people. Let us pray. God of the ages, we know that in our humanness, we attempt to control all aspects of our lives. Because of our need for control, we miss how you make all things new, how you build and prepare a world filled with your mercy. Your new world requires that we relinquish our control, look to you, and trust in your guidance for justice and peace. As you sent Jesus to appear to the disciples after his resurrection, we pray that you send us out into your world with courage and compassion to build a world consistent with your vision. We pray that you help us to show mercy, humility, and faith when we are scared of what is to come, and that you strengthen us with the wisdom to know how and where to help. God of our physical beings, we pray for comfort for those who are coping with medical concerns. We pray for those who have recently undergone or anticipating surgeries, those who are ill, those who are facing uncertainty with cancer diagnoses, 
and those who are undergoing rehabilitation. We feel especially vulnerable when our physical health is outside of our control. And we pray for wisdom and sensitivity in our providers who take care of us. We lift to you the caregivers and the family members of those with serious medical concerns. We pray that you may allow them to find rest, to recharge, and to find comfort in you. God of our future, we pray for those who are anticipating life transitions, those who are awaiting a move, those who are adding a new member to their families, those who are restoring and reorienting their lives after a loss. We pray that we may support them in these transitions and that you guide them with a loving and gentle presence. We rejoice in the baptism of Athena Langdell, and we remember our own baptisms. You have called each one of us by name and marked us as yours forever. God of our yesterday, today, and tomorrows, we are grateful for your continual presence. Continue to be with us as we look for your guidance in our lives. As followers of the risen Lord, we are bold to pray together from wherever we are. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you prepare to leave today, don't forget to maybe give us a note about your vaccinations experience. And as we prepare to depart from one another, let's remember our privilege to go out into the world in peace. This has always required courage to hold fast to what is good, to return no person evil for evil, to strengthen the faint-hearted, to support the weak, to help the suffering, and in so doing, to honor all people, loving and serving the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Any of it, all of it, is possible for you and for me because we're enveloped by our Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, and Friend. Amen. The Church of Christ in every age, beset by change but spirit-led, must claim and test its head.